Being a Canadian company that's audience is mostly American puts us at ET Transport in a bit of a pickle. On one side, we get lots of Canadians who roast us for adopting America's preferred units of measurement, the imperial system, when talking about things like gas prices, distances, speed, and etc. Then on the other side, we'd surely confuse the main portion of our audience if we used Canada's preferred units of measurement, the metric system. So we thought it'd be a good idea to not just go into details about why we use different units of measurement, but also how silly some of it can be. If you want to keep up to date with the world of trucking, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video, and let's get into it. Hold on, hold on, one second. Do you have a product, device, app, or technology that can help our North American truck drivers? Well, if you do, you can be a sponsor in one of our next videos. With over 90,000 truck drivers a part of our channel and over half a million views monthly, I'd like to bring your product to life. Email us at sponsorship at ettransport.ca. And now, back to that video. America and Canada are extremely close not just physically, but we're also connected culturally. Well, in the same sense a one-way road is connected to two places. Seeing as Canada treats America like the cooler and more popular older sibling, and America treats Canada like the younger sibling they honestly couldn't care less to be around. Seeing as these countries now and throughout history have been so interconnected, it has puzzled mathematicians and trivia buffs alike for decades as to why we use separate units of measurement. Today, we're gonna get to the bottom of it. But we've got to start back in the late 18th century. The United States was a young and ambitious nation, full of hope and determination. And they were pissed that the British wanted to tax their tea. So they said to hell with the British and broke off and decided to do things their own way. Also, I'm acknowledging that this is a massive oversimplification to the founding of America. However, that's not the topic of the video at hand. When America split from the British, one of the first things they changed was their system of measurement. They ended up choosing the mile and more broadly the imperial system because it was strong, reliable, and most importantly, not used by those annoying Brits. However, at this time, Canada was still a British colony. Seeing as we've always been somebody's younger sibling, we've also been easy to push around. So we had no choice but to follow along with whatever our overlords were doing at the time. And what were the Brits doing? Adopting the metric system. This included the use of the kilometer as the standard unit of distance, and thus a great divide was created. To this day, the United States stubbornly sticks to their miles despite being the only major Western nation using it, and there are only three countries on the planet that still use the imperial system. Liberia, Myanmar, and, well, America. So why does America stick to the imperial system? Which, funnily enough, is also known as the British system. Well, it's used for a variety of reasons. The main one being that all types of humans and nations don't tend to like change. The imperial system has been used in the United States for over 200 years, and most people tend to think about it like the equivalent of your grandparents saying they've reached an age where they won't learn anything new. However, there are two more important reasons America hasn't adopted the metric system than resisting change. One of them being the fact that the US has the biggest stick in the global yard and the most purchasing power. Essentially, they can say, if you want to do business with us, it's our way or the highway. Then there is the biggest reason of them all, and it's pretty reasonable that America wouldn't want to change its standard units of measurement when you realize how large of a task it is. Many people think all it would entail would be changing the language used on packaging and signs, although there's a lot more to quote unquote going metric than that. For instance, printing the size of a can of peas as 453.6 grams in bold instead of one pound is not changing your units of measurement. Going metric means changing the size of that can of peas to either 500 or 400 grams to be simpler. It means changing the size of wires from American wire gauge to the metric wire standard, changing the sizes and pitches of screws and bolts from nice even fractions of an inch to nice even fractions of a centimeter. Going metric means changing the manufacturing base from bottom to top. When you take that into consideration that the machines that manufacture products in American factories were built to use the imperial system, it makes a lot more sense. Although I've got to point out that despite Canada officially claiming we use the metric system, we seem to be pretty confused culturally about what we actually use. This is how absurd units of measurement are in Canada. Depending on what we're measuring, we decide whether we want to use metric or imperial. For instance, if we're measuring speed, it's metric, aka kilometers. When we're measuring our height, we use imperial, for instance, six foot one inch. If we're making measurements for work, whether it be mechanical or carpentry and so on, we use imperial. 
When we're measuring temperature, we use Fahrenheit for cooking, then for everything else we use Celsius. Well, unless it's your pool or hot tub, then we also use Fahrenheit. If we're weighing something not so heavy, we use pounds. If we're weighing something extremely heavy, we use kilograms. But if we're weighing ourselves, we also use pounds. Then if we're measuring the volume of something, we use metric, for instance millimeters, unless it's for cooking, and then we use cups and spoons. So my point here is, is that seeing as many Canadians rip on America, America for using the imperial system still, maybe we should actually fully adopt a measurement system before criticizing them. Lastly, which system is better? Well, it's pretty much unanimously recognized that the metric system is better. One of the main differences is that it is easier to convert measurements in the metric system. For instance, you can do so by just dividing or multiplying by powers of 10. Imperial units, on the other hand, are much messier to convert. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little rundown on the differences between America and Canada's units of measurements. We'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. Would it be worth the financial effort for a nation like America to convert and get on the same page as all other nations? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with new content, and we'll catch you next time.